just the dolly. It's a meter in length and it's simply two tubes, steel tubes, 16 mils diameter from Bunnings and a small plate uh, 50 wide by 3 and some feet made of pine to hold the thing together. At the moment the slider system is the worst part of the project because the 16 mil tubes go into 22 mil holes and so there's a lot of play here. You can basically grab the camera and move it like that. But we're planning to get a proper slider, probably a Iger system or something, so I'm not too concerned about the, the rail system at the moment. The movement, I use the timing belt, uh, 2 mil pitch timing belt. That's the one that's used on the 3D printers and so it's fairly cheap. It's about uh, $13 for one belt with two pulleys, 2 meters of belt, so it's fairly inexpensive and it works well. Uh, the belt is clamped on either side. It's folded onto itself so it, the, the teeth catches to, onto themselves and it locks the belt. And here, for the tension, it's simply, uh, we have a little bar here. Uh, really, uh, the belt with teeth on teeth uh, works really well and you can control the tension fairly well as well. And then, here's the system which I uh, copied from a design I saw on the internet. Uh, this is the axle from the stepper and here are two uh, pulleys. The stepper is going to spin here and it's clamped the same on the other end. One thing about this drive system, it works fairly well and it has um, reasonable accuracy etc. But one thing is to get these three axes very parallel as much as you can because if they are not if this axis is tilted this way, the, the pulley is going to come here and track towards the end here and it's going to increase friction, it's going to create a, a lot of problems for your motor, the motor is going to skip steps, etc, etc. So getting these three axles as parallel as you can is really the tricky part and I have a... the part is made of ply but I think an aluminium part here would be better uh, to really have good uh, parallelism between the axes. The pulley system I'm going to change as well. At the moment it's simply a, a wood screw here uh, with a pilot hole. I drill the pilot hole through this plate here and then through the thickness of the chariot top plate here, uh, which is not ideal, but it works. And this wood screw is not threaded to the end, so the end here is smooth. And I have, I cut just a tiny little piece of 10 mil aluminium tube to make a little spacer here and then put another pulley uh, which can then spin like this. Uh, I'm planning on changing this because one, the pulley doesn't spin properly, it has a lot of friction. So what I will try is simply a much smaller diameter pulley, basically the diameter of the head of the screw here and get rid of the pulley and just use this small 10 mil aluminium tube which then I'm going to screw tight and this will simply create friction on the on the piece of tube. Instead of trying to rotate this and have no friction which requires some kind of bearing inside or bushing or whatever, uh, simply have this pulley fixed and the belt slide on top of it here. And I assume, I haven't tried it yet, but if the diameter is much smaller, the friction is not going to be too much of a problem here. Here you can see the stepper with the custom plywood mount. It's very rigid, it's not gonna move. And behind are the electronics, which are still a huge mess because I haven't soldered anything. I want to get everything working before I solder it all onto a board. But basically, uh, the microcontroller is a um, Chinese clone of the Pro Mini, which I found on eBay. You can find for $2.50 or $3. The stepper driver is an A4980. Uh, breakout which works okay for my application, low current, low voltage, etc. etc. Um, and communication here you can see one of these small um, NRF24, the Nordic 
um, 2.4 gigahertz radio chips. Uh, it's gonna receive orders from the computer at the moment. Uh, also a small pot that I used uh, before when I didn't have um, radio control. I can go left and right, a small LED. Uh, that's the voltage indicator for the battery. Uh, you can buy them for like $2. Uh, I'm gonna change them because it beeps. Uh, there are two buzzers here which are very loud. And also it has two LEDs which uh, drain current. I don't want that, so I plan to change this. Uh, yeah, basically this is all the electronics. For the control on the PC side, I have a little transmitter here, which is simply a UNO board, original UNO board here, uh, where I um, plugged in another one of these uh, NRF24 uh, radio chips, uh, plus two LEDs to control what the thing is sending. Uh, but that's it, pretty much a um, microcontroller with a radio. Uh, and then plugged into the PC and my interface in MATLAB. And what MATLAB does is simply, every time you click a button, it will send, every time you click left, right here, it will send through the serial port. I am sending eight values, uh, of which I use only four at the moment. So for example, if you click on the left button, uh, the left button reads the speed from this little text box here. This is arbitrary unit, so uh, need to do a bit of calculations and then send the left or right. So um, the way I set up the thing, uh, the, f the first byte is the direction, second is the speed, third is are we micro stepping or not, and then I don't use the, the, f the other ones. This slider here works on the same principle every time you move it, it's going to send sent through the serial port, uh, reading the position here on the cursor. So every time you click on this zone, which is an axis on this line here, it sets the window button motion function callback of the figure to one, update the position of the line to the X position of the cursor, and two, update the speed to the position of the cursor and then send that through serial. And when you release, it calls the window button up function, which then sets the button motion function to zero, so the button motion function doesn't do anything. Uh, so you can either click on the line here and move it, and when you release, everything's gonna go back to zero, so it looks a bit like uh, an Android application where you uh, control with your finger. You can also click anywhere here, so you don't have to start from zero speed every time. Basically, yeah. Uh, it also updates the speed here every time you move. So then if you click left or right, it's going to move at the speed that you last used when using the slider. And the slow button here simply sends a byte to uh, switch the stepper driving mode between um, normal mode and micro stepping mode, which allows for the fine control. And then the remote itself is very simple, just reads serial and sends what it received through the radio, nothing more. Just uh, translating from the serial port to a, a radio data. To trigger the camera, I use a, a remote trigger. This is a D7000, so the trigger I used uh, is called M2DS2, I believe, but there's different types for different models of cameras um, and this is fairly simple it has three wires coming out one ground one focus and one trigger uh, and then here in there is simply a, just a little bit of um, perf board with two npn transistors and uh, two resistors and what it does is simply you write first high on the focus line and then wait about uh, one tenth of a second or so and then write a high on the trigger line and it's gonna uh, release the shutter of the camera that's it there is plenty of tutorials and examples and videos on internet how to trigger a Nikon camera and it's very easy to do uh, to control the stepper 
Uh, I found this beautiful PDF, uh, which is from Atmel. Uh, linear speed control of stepper motor contains everything you need, really, or that I needed at least. Uh, what we want is um, when we give a speed to the stepper, uh, we want to st the stepper to accelerate linearly, so have a constant acceleration and linear increase in. Uh, velocity. Uh, once, once we reach desired speed, keep going at this rate, and then when we tell it to stop or decelerate, have a linear deceleration. So, you can look at the whole theory on uh, this PDF, it's really well explained. Uh, here is the speed slope that we want, and this is the um, step interval in seconds that we need to input in our driver. Uh, so here they did the whole uh, calculation and this is the exact formula and this is too long to compute for a microcontroller so what they did is they used the first order Taylor expansion which gives you this formula which is step duration as a function of previous step duration and number of steps done uh, which is what I implemented and then you can vary n and you can vary your initial step here C0 uh, to change the slope so to change the the acceleration of your stepper and if you have uh, different values for n for acceleration and deceleration you can have this kind of uh, asymmetric curves with where the acceleration is smoother than the deceleration